Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday and today we are diving into Urkel, which could be a replacement for the Apollo client. So it's not as popular as Apollo. If we look at NPM, Apollo's got 1.1 million uh, weekly downloads. Urkel's only got 128,000. But the cool thing is if you go into the bundle size, Urkel comes in weighing 7.5 kilobytes, while Apollo's way up there at 33 kilobytes. So basically, if Urkel does what you need it to do, which is pretty much most of Apollo, it could be a great, more lightweight replacement. So we're going to talk today about how to set it up, how to do client-side queries, and then since we're going to be working inside of Next.js, we are going to cover server-side rendering and static generation using the get static props function. So let's get started. Here's our app. It's running on localhost port 3000 and it's just saying home right now. So if we pull up the code base, I just want to show the dependencies we're working with first. I've only installed two outside of the typical Next.js setup. That would be GraphQL and Urkel itself. So first, what GraphQL API are we working with? I'm, I've pulled up here in my uh, GraphQL playground. We're using GraphQL weather api.herokuapp.com. It's just a simple GraphQL API we can connect to. And here I am querying the city weather where I live right now, Toronto weather, where we're asking for the, the summary of the weather, the temperature, and we're passing in one variable here, city of Toronto. And this is what we get back. So that's the data we're working with. So moving back over to the code, what we're going to get started with is actually setting up the Urkel client. That will be the first step. So I've already got the imports here. It seems like a lot of them, but it's not so bad once we get going. So because we're gonna cover server-side rendering um, at some point later in this video, I'm gonna set up this client now to support it, even though we're not going to use that functionality right off the bat. So we're gonna start by creating a variable called isServerSide. And we're gonna set this by looking at the type of window. So if it's equal to undefined, that means we're on the server because there's no, there's no window on in Node, I guess. So that's, that's how you do that. And next, we are going to set up the SSR cache. So SSR cache, and that is equal to SSR exchange, where we have to tell it whether or not we're on the client or not. So we can just say it's the not of is server side. Um, this thing here will be in charge of basically recording the queries on the server so that when we get into client land, it doesn't have to re-execute those same queries. But forget about that for now. We'll come back to it later. So now we're going to set up the instance of the Urkel client itself. So this will be using the create client function. And we just have to pass in a few things. We have to pass in the URL that we're connecting to. So I'll just pop over here and copy that, paste it in. And then we're gonna set up something called exchanges. And if you've worked with Apollo client before, to me, this is most similar to what they call links. It's sort of like pieces of code that can intercept and modify the outgoing uh, GraphQL request and sometimes stop it um, before it actually goes out onto the, in onto the internet. So we're using a few exchanges here. The first one is the dedupe exchange. Um, I assume this is if you're querying the same query twice, it dedupes them so it only passes it to the server once. Then we've got the cache exchange. No, next we have the SSR cache. And then finally we have the fetch exchange. Uh, in Apollo links, it's the same way. The, the last link or the last exchange is typically always the one that goes out across the internet and makes the actual fetch request. So that's setting up our client. We're not gonna use this next thing I'm gonna show, but just if you needed to pass credentials in headers and stuff like that, you can do that by passing a function to fetch options where you can return things like the headers. So we're just gonna leave it at that. We're not gonna add any additional headers, but this is how you would add like your authentication header or authorization header or whatnot. So with this setup, we are going to export both the client and the SSR cache because we are going to need that when we move into the SSR territory. So with our client setup, 
We basically need a way to provide this to the rest of our application. And that in Next.js is done in the pages underscore app component, which wraps around every single page of your application. And we are going to import provider from Urkel, from the package itself. And then we are going to import the client and the SSR cache from this uh, file we just set up, creating the Urkel client. So let's wrap the provider around our page, the component, like that. And we need to pass the client as the value prop to our provider. That's it for now. We're not going to touch this till we get to SSR, but this will basically provide our client to the rest of our application. So now we can move into the page itself, which right now is not doing very much. It just says the word home inside of a pre tag. So we're going to start by um, uncommenting out those two imports. So we're using a use query hook. So very comfortable if you've been working with Apollo client before, and we're also going to access the client and the SSR cache as well from the, the file we set up. So the first thing is we need to declare our query. So we're going to say const weather query is equal to um, backticks. So in a Paul client, you're typically used to using GQL here. Uh, it doesn't seem like you have to do that with Urkel, so we're going to leave that off. And I'm going to go back over to um, this GraphQL playground and just copy and paste this query. So why don't I just cover this query quickly? What we're doing is we're saying to GraphQL, we're going to do a query as opposed to a mutation or a subscription. And we're going to give a name to that query, Toronto weather. This could be called whatever you want. It's up to you. And we're saying we're going to be passing in a variable called city of type string. It's required with this bang here. And then we run the actual query, get city by name, where we pass in um, as a field here, the variable value city. And then the rest is just the different fields we're going to ask uh, GraphQL to give us. So with this in place, we can move down into the, the uh, component itself, the home page. And what we're going to do is we are going to say const result is equal to use query. And um, this is a little bit different than Apollo. What you do is you pass an object in and you say, okay, my query is weather query, the variable from up here, and my variables are city of Toronto, just like that. So inside of result is where you get the data or whether it's loading or whether there's an error. So we'll say here, um, data loading and error, and we'll just grab that from the result object. So now we can do our, our handling like if loading, return loading, if error, return error, oops, just like that. So that means if we get to this point here, we know we have data and we're done loading. So what we can do is um, inside of these braces, we're going to use json.stringify data no replacement spacing of two. So that is um, setting up our query, just making sure I didn't miss anything here. I was like, I haven't used these things at all yet. What's happening? It's because those are going to be used later in the SSR portion. So let's hop on over to the web. We can already see here that we have our data on the screen. If I refresh, um, so quick you don't even see the loading text, but um, it is good to go just like that. And we can go in here to the network tab and we can query, refresh the page and we can see that it's making this fetch request over to this GraphQL API. So that is client side Urkel. Pretty easy to get set up and it's almost just as easy to add in server side rendering. So they do provide a next Urkel package. And I was looking at it and after sort of understanding how it worked, I sort of realized it's almost just as easy to do this myself um, and just using sort of the base Urkel package. So that's what I'm going to do, but feel free to check out Next Urkel if you'd like. I just found it almost pointless because it's, it's so easy to get up and running. So we are going to export our async function called get server side props. So in here, basically our job is to perform the queries 
on the server that would be run inside of our component here. So we are going to await for the client. So that's why I imported the client here. So we're gonna await for the client to perform a query and we're gonna perform the weather query and we need to give it the variables. That's the second um, argument passed to this function. So this would be city of Toronto. And at the end, we have to say to promise. I don't know what it is when you don't do that, but I guess it's not a promise. So we're going to await for this client to finish. And the funny thing is you don't do anything with the result of this um, query yet. Basically, what you do is you come here and the job of get server side props is typically to return props that will be passed into our um, component. Um, our, you could receive them here. So any props that you return from this get server side props, you could receive them here so that you can then render your component server side. But what we are going to do is we're going to return that, the props, but the prop we're going to return is called Urkel state. And let's um, grab that. So where does it come from? It basically comes from this SSR cache that we set up. So you say SSR cache, and then you call a function called extract data, just like this. So if we were to refresh the page, will it work? And the answer is no. So undefined, cannot be returned. So I screwed up, oh, that's what I screwed up. Refresh, there we go. So it's still executing the query as we can see here. So it's not fully SSR yet. We're sort of missing a step. So what do we do with these props, the Urkel state that is returned from our get service side props function. What we're going to do is go over here into the app. So this is, remember, it wraps around every page. And we're gonna start just by console.logging the page props so we can see what's inside of them. So if I go into the console, let's just clear that out, refresh the page. Warning, did not expect server HTML to contain text. Okay, so this is my bad, I think. Um, I don't think you can just return that. You have to wrap it in a component. So that means we don't need that. So I'll just fix this as well, say error. Refresh, hopefully, oh shoot. What did I mess up? Did not expect server HTML to contain text node. So I've done something wrong. So get city by name in pre. Ah, uh, you know what? I think the issue is right now, it's basically whatever's rendered on the server it's expecting the client when it first renders to, to match the same thing that the server rendered. So right now it's saying like, uh, I've got a mismatch between them. That's my theory anyway. We'll see if that's true once we continue. So it was not that this has to be wrapped in a div. So sorry for wasting your time. But what I actually wanted to show is what's inside of this Urkel state. So we'll take a look at that and then we'll see if we can get this error or this warning fixed in a second. So what you can see here in Urkel state is basically the data that was returned from that query. So our next step is basically we need to take that data that was returned from get server side props as Urkel state. And then when we render client side, it's passed in as a page prop. And we need to basically take that data and stick it back in the Urkel client so that when it goes to query this data on the client, it sort of realizes, oh, I already have this in my cache. I don't need to go out on the internet and re-query it. I can just use the, the data that I already have. So we'll do that by saying, if page props dot Urkel state, so if there is some state, we're going to access our SSR cache, and we're gonna call a function called restore data, where we basically just pass in the page props dot Urkel state, like that. So if I clear this out, let's see if my error goes away. 
let's hope. Okay, it does. So that, that fixed that one problem. Basically, whenever you do SSR, the server has to render the same thing that the client originally renders. Otherwise, it, it wants them to be same and it doesn't like it and it gives you warnings. But let's go into the network tab and refresh. And this time we don't see any um, HTTP, queer, HTTP requests going across the internet because it's reusing that cache that we generated on the server and then restored in the client on the, um, on the app, on the, on the page, the My App component that wraps everything. So at this point, we have done SSR. We're going to copy this, comment it out, and we're going to actually show how to do static generation. So I'm going to paste this in and I'm going to say get static props. So what's the difference between this two? This executes on the server during runtime. So every request that goes in, it's going to be executing this query. But say the data doesn't change very often and you want to instead generate it statically at build time. So for that, you can use get static props instead. So when you build this app and put it out on the internet, it will generate the query once and then it will just reuse that static content sort of more like how Gatsby functions. And honestly, you don't have to even change anything at all here. Just the name of this, everything else works the exact same. So I can refresh, it's still not executing the query. But what you could do here is you could pass in another one called revalidate, um, let's say every 60 seconds. So instead now what this will do is basically we'll reuse the same data for 60 seconds then it, the next request comes in, it will run it once to regenerate the static content, and then that will be valid for another 60 seconds. So we've essentially implemented a 60, a one minute cache. So, which I think for weather is fine because it's not changing every five seconds. And with that, we're done. So basically we covered how Urkel can be a great replacement for Apollo. It does 95% or more of what you typically do in Apollo. I don't think it does like, um, you know, Apollo can do like local state, which I think is sort of weird anyways, but Urkel can't do that. And in my case, that's fine because I don't really like using that anyways. I prefer to keep my server side state separate from my app local state. But what we covered is basically how to set up the Urkel client using these exchanges and how we can override the headers that are passed with each HTTP request. Then we took that client and wrapped it around each of our pages as a provider so that we can access um, functionality that it provides, such as executing queries using the use query hook. We checked if loading, error, and finally we rendered this data. And then we covered how you can basically go the next step and support server-side rendering and static generation, SSG. And then you can add that revalidate 60 seconds to turn it into a cache that gets invalidated once a minute. But the props that are returned from both of these functions, here you basically need to intercept them and use them to restore the data in the SSR cache. So if we were to go back and look at the Urkel client, each request that you make, it sort of goes through each of these exchanges. So it's gonna go through dedupe, then cache, then SSR cache before making an HTTP request. So basically, I don't know if it's the cache layer or this layer, but either way, it sort of realizes, oh, I already have the data for this query. I don't have to keep going to the fetch exchange. I can just return the result immediately which is accomplishing not actually performing um, queries on the client. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I just wanted to mention two things. If you're liking this content, I produce React and JavaScript videos weekly. So please subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified. Like this video if you did in fact like it. But I also wanted to just quickly mention that I launched a Next.js course. You can find it at next.leehalliday.com. And we build a full stack Next.js application using, in this case, Apollo Client, GraphQL, Maps, TypeScript, uh, Prisma to do databases. So it's really cool. Check that out. It's a great way to support me and the channel. Have a great day. Bye.